Hello, this video is about learning function calls in C. So the idea is to be able to reuse your code. So the first function call we will develop is to say hello world. So we start out by typing the return type followed by the function name. And then in brackets we provide the function parameters. So I will get to the uh, return type and I will get to the uh, function parameter in a little bit. First, let's start with a simple example. So this is called declaring a function. It's like declaring an integer or a variable. Now we have to define the function. So you declare the function before your main and you define your function after the main and this is called the function declaration or signature and now we're going to define the function so what you do is take the exact same thing that you have here get rid of the semicolon and start and end your curly brace so this is called defining a function so let's type some code in here and you guys can ignore this line of code this is just needed because I'm compiling on Windows computer using the Eclipse min GCC compiler so the, the way you call the functions is just the function name itself. And you start the uh, round bracket and you notice that there is no parameter. Void means no parameter or void means nothing. So because there is nothing, you don't type anything inside these brackets here. So I'm going to call this function three times and let's see how it runs. So as you can see, what happened here is it printed hello functions three times. What's happening here is your main function starts and it goes, o it goes over to say hello first time. So the moment you, the moment the compiler or the program sees this function call, it actually goes inside of this function and whatever you told it to do, it will do that. So I can have more code over here and this code will now execute so let me run this again of course I can't because there's an error so now what's happening here is as you see the moment you say hello, your processor will reach this line of code, execute that, will reach the next line of code, execute that. And after this function is done, which means the line right before the curly, bra uh, curly brace right here, after your function is done, it goes back to the next line of code. So we started with line number 17. And after your uh, say hello finishes, you're now at line number 18 and that finishes you're now at line number 19 so each of these lines 17 18 and 19 think of that as this these three lines in one so that's called a function I'm reusing this function I'm calling it three times so that's a simple example of a function now let's go ahead and actually declare functions that do something meaningful so let's develop our own power function okay so the idea is that this power function parameters will be base and power and they will both be integers and return type will return data will be 
result of base to the power of this. Okay. So by designing or by writing good documentation, it will help you write your functions faster. So now let's let's explain what this void really did and we're not going to use void anymore. See this return data here? So that means what does this function return? So we're going to return the result of base to the power. So we're let's say we're dealing with integer. So we're going to return an integer back. And it takes two parameters, base and power. These are two separate variables, base and power, like so. And this is called a function signature. So we have one integer return type, and we have two parameters, which are integers. So again, this is a function signature or declaration. We're going to go after the main function and copy and paste this code in. And let's just try to compile as is. And as you'll see, there will be an error. The reason why there's an error is I forgot to get rid of this semicolon. So when you define a function, there is no semicolon at the end. And now I'll actually show you guys how to return something from this function. So let's start with a simple uh, if condition because whenever power is equals to zero, so I, I'm not going to cover all the corner cases here, but whenever power equals to zero, let's just say that I'm going to return one because anything to the power of zero is one. Okay. Okay, so this covers the simple case when I test if power equals to zero. Okay, so the next will be the else statement. Okay, so this is one way of returning. Now, whenever you say return, that means your function literally returns here. It doesn't even go to the next line of code. So if you have that, this is an unreachable line of code because the moment you say return one, this function will actually return back to wherever it was called from. So let's cover the simple test case. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this function. So let's say result equals to power two to the raised power zero. And we will print this result out. So two to the zero equals to some number and result. So let's compile this code. And as you see, two to the zero is one. So let's go over again how the parameters and the return type works. When you call this function now, it's expecting two parameters of type base and power. So base parameter will receive the two because that's the first parameter. And after the comma, power parameter will receive the zero. And whatever this function returns, we're gonna catch it and store it into this variable. So result equals two, power two and zero. Now one thing I haven't done here is taking care of the else. So we will get to that in just a little bit. So another way to use this function is without using intermediate variable. So what if we try zero to the zero? Now this time I'm not gonna store the result. I'm instead just going to tell printf to print whatever it gets back as a result of this function. So when you type this line of code, what happens is printf will first print this and when it gets to percent %i, it'll actually go to this function and whatever fun this function returns will be printed out. So let's run this and the result will be no different. Zero to the zero is one. Now, let's take care of the else or maybe save this as an exercise for you. 
but I'll give you a hint. So the pattern is that two to the zero is of course one, we've taken care of that. Two to the one is two. Two to the two is four. Two to the three is eight. So the idea is, depending on the power, you're going to keep on multiplying the base. So let's say result is zero. Now, you're basically going to write a for loop of so I'll let you figure that out, but basically what we'll do is maybe we'll st actually we'll start result with zero with, with one, and result will be basically result times power in each case. I think that looks better. So it's all highlighted red. So I'll let you figure out this algorithm. So let's go back to another thing I want to mention here. So because this is a compiler error, I'm actually going to get rid of it. But based on this pattern, you can figure out the for loop, how many times you need to count, and what do you need to multiply each time. Okay. Now, the other thing I'm going to cover is local and global variables. So let's say I had base equals to 2 and power equals to 3. Uh, one thing is that you shouldn't have same variable name as the uh, parameters. So let's actually name this power function. Okay. here too. Okay, so local and global variables. This variable is local to main because it's inside these curly braces which main owns. Main knows what base and power is. These are completely separate variables from base and power over here. So if we call the power function with base and power, like so. And I print these variables out. It will be printing two and three that we know. For beginners though, one thing people have trouble with is the following. So the question is what if you call this power function over here, power function goes in, it sets the base to zero and the power to zero. So one thing people have trouble with is they will think that it will actually print zero and zero over here. But that's not the case. As you see base and power still is printed with value of 2 and 3. The trick is when this function gets called it knows about its own variables called base and power. They are completely separate from these variables. So what happens here is when you call this function you copy main variables so you copy main functions variable base and power into this functions variable base and power these are completely separate copies so I can name it base main and I can name these this one power main so these variables belong to the main function and when this function is called, it only knows about his own variables called base and power. These are not shared. These are not the same thing. So that covers your local variables.